But looking forward to talking to our next two guests. Love doing these face-to-faces, and I'm sure they're tired of being around each other, talking to each other, talking about each other. They're just days away now from a very, very, very highly anticipated fight going down over where Crystal Palace plays, the Premier League team, Selhurst Park, 28,000 people they are expecting in attendance as the WBO Cruiserweight title will be on the line. It airs here in the United States on Peacock, over in the UK on Sky Sports, a ton of um, a ton of hype, a ton of attention, a ton of, a ton of drama, uh, a lot of buzz going into this one because these two know each other very well. They fought about five years ago on that night, the midnight train, Richard Riakpour won uh, via somewhat controversial decision uh, since then. His opponent on that night, Chris Billum Smith, has not lost and, in fact, uh, has become the WBO Cruiserweight title. So that fight um, will be you know, replayed on Saturday, and this time uh, there will be a title on the line. There's a ton of interest going into this one, and they're both kind enough on one of their last stops before fight night to join us here on the program. We are very appreciative of that. Uh, Chris, we say hello to you. Richard, thank you so much for the time as well. We really appreciate it, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Yes, uh, it's a pleasure. Chris, uh, I'll start with you. At this point, uh, can I just ask, because I know you, you, you are both very, um, you're both very classy and you're both you know, not the, the loud, braggadocious, uh, trash-talking type. Are, are you tired of all the buildup? Are you tired of, I know you, I, you guys were with each other at TalkSport. I watched it yesterday in the studio. At this point, have you had enough of being around this man, talking about this man, thinking about this man? No, no, I'm, uh, I enjoy it. It's fight week. It's my uh, favorite part of uh, favorite part of camp. You know, fight week. You got to enjoy all the all the media and everything that goes with it. So, uh, yeah, no, it's um, obviously getting closer now, but uh, enjoying it nonetheless. How about you, Richard? What's your sentiment? What's your feeling as we approach fight night? But you guys have had to do a lot of stuff together leading up to this. Yeah, it's um, it's it's it goes with the. With a package, it comes with a package, you know. We have to do a lot of promo. We need to be in and around each other. We need to um convince why um can convince people why they should watch the fight. So, you know, I'm I'm pretty much used to it. Plus, I've been around um Chris Ben and Smith um quite a fair bit, spent um a lot of t- um time together in, in the ring some years back. So I'm well acquainted with him. So it's all it's all cool. It's just part of part of work. Um, I, I understand, Richard, that you're a big Crystal Palace supporter. Uh, Chris, I understand you're a big Bournemouth supporter. Uh, commiserations to both of you because uh, we here support Nottingham Forest, uh, the only uh, English club to go back-to-back in Europe, as you well know, 79-80. We could talk about that at, a, at another time. So we're waiting for the city ground to host an event. But why, Chris, as champion, are you going to his home turf? Why is this happening at Crystal Palace and not at Bournemouth Stadium? Um, I mean, we, we, we were looking to do it at Bournemouth, but to be, uh, they couldn't do it this, this time around. But, uh, for me, it's more of a, a challenge going, going this way. And it, it suits me more. I've ticked off that dream of the Vitality Stadium. Um, and now we're on a, on a Premier League stadium tour. So who knows? We might end up at County Ground one day. I, w- I would love that. That would be great. I, I think it's great that you guys are doing this and uh, we don't see enough of this sort of thing, uh, in America. So I think it's brilliant. Uh, Richard, I know that there was some talk about who gets which locker room. Uh, can you tell us about that and where do things currently stand? To be to be fair, um, um, Chris deserves to have the the home locker room. Um, I couldn't care less. You know, if if they said that I had to change in the in a car park, I would do that too, and warm up and get ready there. It's it's not really a big deal for me. Um, yeah, so yeah. Is always okay. So you're going to be in the away locker room. Yes. Okay. Did you know about this, Chris? Um, yeah, my team told me that they, you know, uh, got me all championship rights, champions rights, which are home change room, etc. Um, I leave all that stuff to them. Um, but yeah, it's all, always nice to have a, a nice change room. I was in there uh, yesterday, and it's a, a lovely, lovely room. Do you enjoy as champion being? the guy to spoil the party. I know they're celebrating a hundred years. There hasn't been a boxing event there in multiple decades. Is this kind of a fun, you know, usually when you're champion, you're the, you're the, the hunted rather than the hunter. But in this case, it feels like you're coming in to enemy territory. Do you like being in that spot? Yeah, for sure. I think um, it gives me 
great motivation for this fight of um, going to the into the Lions Den and and uh, you know putting on a great performance and and unfortunately ruin a lot of people's night. Um, Richard, I've 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 seen a lot of stuff that you guys have done, read and watched a lot of your interviews, and I think you may have upset his team when you insinuated that he's taken a lot of damage over the years, that uh, it's taken its toll on him. Could you expand on that? Do you feel like he is not quite the same person and fighter that you fought back in 2019? I think he's improved in a lot of aspects, but at the same time, he's taken a, a lot of damage, as we all, we all have, to be honest, but um, um, some more than others. You know, um, when you box, it's, it's basically wear and tear on the body. Um, that's why we can't stay in our prime forever. And um, we have a, a window where we have to try to look after ourselves, um, take as least amount of damage as possible so we can have a longer career. And with um, Chris Bennett Smith, one of his um, attributes is, is that he has he could take a punch. And I think it's probably affected his style a bit, where he doesn't mind, you know, taking a few shots because he knows he can. But, you know, the, the way the game is, the more you take, the more damage it does. And it just potentially can have some cracks in, in the glass. And it just takes one shot just to crack it. And then it's never the same again. I see you kind of smiling there, Chris, as you're listening to this and looking away. What is your response to this assessment? Uh, um, there's no deterioration, that's for sure. Uh, it's been a fantastic camp. Sparring's been great. Um, there's definitely no deterioration from my point. When's the last time you watched your first fight against Richard, Chris? Um, maybe a month ago. Um, just, yeah, I think we we also watched it in Sky Sports, some highlights. We we, we watched a few highlights then. Um, so, yeah, a, a while ago. What What is it? Because, you know, you obviously didn't come out on top that night. What is a lesson or two that you learned from that fight that you will be looking to not replicate in this fight that you are going to try to learn from so that it doesn't happen again on Saturday? I think I just had a massive lack of experience in that fight, to be honest with you. It was, um, you know, my first 50-50 fight with, with, against someone um, who of decent quality like Richard. Um, so, yeah, just the experience from that fight and then every fight I've had since then has been massive experience for me and a uh, completely different animal now. Who do you think has improved more since then, Richard? You or Chris? It's a hard question to answer because um, Chris, I've improved, um, but I haven't had um, the results to show um, other than just the, the wins of my fights. But he actually has a world title. So I think um, both of us have improved a lot. And I feel people will be able to see and assess on, on Saturday night who has improved more, mm. depending on who are victorious and how. I have I've seen Chris, um, or I should say Richard, I've seen people talk about the fact that uh, you could have had uh, a big-time fight against Jayo Pattaya, and uh, you chose not to take that fight. You chose to go in a different direction. Can you clear that up for us? Because he seems to be the biggest fight at Cruiserweight right now in boxing, and I heard you say it was a business decision. And so can you can you explain why that fight didn't happen? There was a lot of politics um, surrounding that fight. Um, I was ready to fight. Um, I told my promoters that I won the fight, no matter what's what's going on. Um, and they basically, I don't want to really go too much into it because there's a lot of uh, sensitive information there. But um, it didn't it didn't happen. You know, I feel like it's it's just the politics in boxing that get involved and where fights don't happen. But I I believe. You know, it's a fight that I want in the future, and I believe it will happen in, in the future. And and sure. just and just to expand on that for a moment, when you talk about the politics, do you mean like matchroom boxer politics? Yeah, I think so. yeah, there's a bunch of things, a bunch of things, and to be honest, I don't really know everything that goes on because you know me, I'm I'm just a fighter. I'm I just find i just receive a date receive an opponent and i train and prepare for it as best as i can um i'm undefeated fire i have confidence i have a lot of power you know so i have all the confidence i need to to go against anybody it's not a thing uh, where i look at five and oh my gosh this guy's <laughs> dangerous you know everybody's dangerous so um it was just pretty much out of my hands chris what is your take on this fight not happening 
On Richard versus Jai? Yeah. Uh, look, I don't know what happened. Um, I just saw Richard was mandatory and then he wasn't. Um, I don't know what happens, but, you know, I'm, we're, we're here now and uh, that's all that matters. Is, is the winner of this fight getting Jai next? Is that like, Chris, if, if you retain, is that what you want? I think Jai Apatai or Zerdo Ramirez next for me. Um, I, I like Zerdo Ramirez fight because I really want to fight in in America. Um, it'd be a great thing to tick off the bucket list. This the fans out in America are fantastic, and the the whole show and everything goes with it. And as a Brit, um, and uh, you all boxers, British boxers, want to fight in in America, whether that's Vegas or New York or LA, wherever it may be, but um, to do a fight night out there and a fight camp out there would be be amazing. So um, yeah, one of those two fights next. Um, I'm not breaking any news here, but uh, Richard's a, is, is a good looking lad, as they say. And uh, I know he dabbles in the modeling world as well and uh, has been linked to some very important people. And I, I've heard you say, Chris, uh, you're driving to the gym, you see him on buses and whatnot, you have to look at his face. Do you think he's as dedicated to the game as you are? Or do you think that some of these other things takes his focus and attention and drive away from the sweet science? No, I think he's. Uh, I think he's dedicated. You know, he he has his other other things and and whatever. You know, I don't know the ins and outs of that. But um, no, it's good to always good to see him when I'm uh, when he's on the back of the bus with a sign saying "You got this." So I always thank him for the uh, thank him for the motivation. So I uh, appreciate it. Um, Richard, I, I feel like when you do media, a lot of people dance around this question, so I will not do that. Are you dating Madonna? I'm not dating, I'm not dating Madonna. She's a friend of mine, though. Okay. Have you ever dated Madonna? <laughs> no, I haven't. You're just friends? Platonic? Yes. Nothing else? Platonic. Yeah. Platonic. I saw her sitting on your lap, and she posted that she couldn't find anywhere else to sit, so that made me think that there was maybe a little bit more there. Madonna is Madonna. That's all I can say. Legend. She could sit wherever the hell she wants, right? Says <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just, you know. Uh, I said it, not you. Uh, is she attending the fight on Saturday? Yeah, she wants to. So, um, But she just came off tour, and she was on tour for, for a year. So she was quite exhausted when I spoke to her last, um, but she said she wants to come. I think it's dependent on a few outside variables. So hopefully she can make it down. But um, yeah, it will, everybody wants to see her too. So yes. I, think be... I mean, she's got to make a call at some point. The fight's in like three days. Of course, yeah. Can course. you tell her to hurry up? We all want to know. Is she going to be sitting there or not? Well, okay. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to ask you to rehash your life story. People can read about it, Richard. But you have overcome a lot. You were stabbed when you were younger. You're outside. Guy wants your phone. Stabs you in the chest. You survive. It's an incredible story. You have a scar to show it. Not a lot of people would survive. But the reason I'm asking you about it and bringing it up is because you went through that and overcame that and survived that. Does that make you a better boxer in the sense that there's nothing that anyone, any human being with two you know hands, can do that would make you nervous or afraid or anxious or instill fear in you because you overcame life and death. That's maybe what makes you so great as a boxer. There is nothing that anyone can do that can be worse than what you experienced, um, you know, a few years back when you were stabbed. I think um, that's, that's a good question, Ariel. I think it's, it's a, a, a whole bunch of variables that affect a fighter, that makes a fighter a, a great fighter. And from my, from my knowledge and from, from what I've seen, my perception, all of the best fighters, they came from adversity and struggle, and um, which made them fight in a certain type of way. If you check my fights, you could see it when I fight. You know, there's fights where I didn't really have experience. I didn't really have that um, experience as a boxer, like as an amateur boxer and stuff like that. But I was able to, to you know, fight for what, what I need. You know what I mean? Um, just find a way to win. And that's pretty much been my my mentality. When I look at solid, like fighters like Roberto Duran, um, you know, what's it? Um, all of these type of fighters, they all had something because they came from they came from the gutter, and I came from that place, and this definitely helped me fight in, um, differently. Mm. Sure. Um, well, Chris, for you, a lot of focus is on 
Richard's struggles and upbringing up. Do you believe in the same? Do you believe that a great fighter needs to overcome great, you know, challenges and struggles? And and have you done that? Um, in, in a sense, but not in terms of necessarily upbringing. I think my, my upbringing was fantastic. I was very fortunate, very privileged as a, as a child and, and teenager. And um, yeah, very, very lucky. So, but you have to go through things in the boxing ring, obviously, to to in or whatever field you're in, you have to face adversity in that. And um, I've done plenty of that in the gym, in fights, um, you know, uh, and and all that build builds you. And you can't you can't buy experience. And the experience of, uh, I've had in in boxing have have made me the fight I am and um, give me great confidence. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, Chris, about another fighter on this card, Ben Whitaker. He's been somewhat of a um you know, a, a hot topic, a polarizing figure in the sport, given his style um, as, a, as a champion, as someone who's accomplished in the sport now, how do you feel about, for lack of a better word, his antics in the ring? Uh, look, that's, that's his, his style and he's getting well known for it. Uh, I know Ben outside the ring as well. I, I was on um, GB assessments with him as, a, as an amateur and he's a, he's a great lad. Um, he's a fantastic fighter huge amounts of ability um and you know i know he he likes to showboat but that that's him everyone used to love prince the scene for it and and you know a lot of showboats some people like it some people hate it but everyone's talking about him and uh that that'll make him a huge name and, and has done already uh there's been you know richard you're you're no um you're no stranger to you know the tabloids and all this stuff because of maybe some of your you know your your, your friendships modeling career stuff can i get your take on the tyson fury stuff that came out this week. A lot of people coming to his defense saying like, look, the guy is allowed a night out. Others saying this is a sign of, of his demise. Uh, I don't envy athletes who have to live in the cell phone era and everything is documented. Unlike 20, 30 years ago, when, when you see this, where do you fall? When I see that, I just, I think a lot of, um, a lot of people forget that we are actually human beings at the same time. We might want to go out. We might want to party. And have a drink. I'm not saying that I drink um, because I don't, but you know, everybody, everybody is is different. Everybody's like everybody's a human being, um, and you know, if he wants to do that, let him do that. He's, I think, he's got to the point of his career where he can enjoy himself. If that's the way he wants to enjoy himself, let him let him do that. Um, yeah, it's a bit tough, you know, because certain people can't be themselves. You know, when you're in the public eye, which is why there's a lot of private clubs and stuff where you know these athletes. Um, choose to go to but um i don't think tyson fury um i don't think this is the first for tyson fury i think tyson fury has probably been doing this throughout his whole career and and it's just another day mm. uh chris uh for the um american fight fans a lot of attention here stateside for the uh tank davis fight this weekend there's a tank davis frank martin fight david benavidez is on saturday i'm trying to get the americans to watch you guys on saturday afternoon uh, because that's when it will air here on Peacock. And I think that the card is great. And I think what you guys have done leading up to this, I think the venue is great. I think your first fight was great. It's all great. And so I'm just wondering if you could give a pitch to the audience who may be watching stateside as to watch why they need to watch you guys on Saturday afternoon before they get ready for the Tank Davis fight. Yeah, I mean, the, the Tank Davis fight is a fantastic fight. Um, well, um, I'll probably still be awake for Um <laughs> So uh, I'll be watching that. But yeah, I mean, it, I think it's safe to say that America fans will definitely like my style of, of, of fighting. Um, it's, it's nonstop action. It's intensity. It's, um, it, it's savagery. And uh, that's, you know, that, that in itself is, is worth, worth watching um, and warm you up for the, for the evening fights. Controversial decision. Uh, some say there was a rugby tackle potentially involved. Uh, Richard, do you need to get a stoppage here to leave no doubt, put an exclamation point, get the belt and move on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's that's what I do now. That's what I focus on. I feel like, you know, boxing fans don't want to see 12 rounds. They want to see people get knocked out, knocked out cold. And I'm I'm happy to say I'm I'm blessed with the power to do that. In my last um, I think five fights, all of them have been knocked out. So, you know, expect nothing different, man. That's my gift. Well, I'm looking forward to it, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, one more box check, uh, te- che- checked, excuse me, on the way to uh, fight night. 
And it's going to be quite the scene at Selhurst Park. I am looking forward to that scene very much and looking forward to watching you two do the dance again. So, Chris, thank you for the time. Good luck to you. Richard, thank you for thank the time. Good luck us. to you. And uh, may the best man win. Much. Is there- All right, guys, take care. There they are, Chris Bilb Smith and Richard Reakpour. That is a fight that is taking place uh, this Saturday on Peacock. Uh, did I, what did I say? Box chicked? Box chick? Uh, what I heard. What is going on here? So much. Who, me? Yeah, it's a lot. Aaron! Uh, Just trying to make you smile. Uh, no, you know, listen, we're all human, Frank. We're all um, human. I suspect that Joe may not be human. Yeah. <laughs> Who, Crypto Joe? Crypto Joe. It's like a machine always calculating crypt- cryptocurrencies. <sighs> this is true. Uh, one second here. Uh, just talk amongst yourself for a second. Kiwi <laughs> What's going on, uh, Connor? Con Dog? Yeah, not much, man. That's good. What did you think of that uh, face-off? It was good, dude. I liked how nice. they... Uh, communicated to each other oh yeah a lot of uh respect there a lot of um oh you're back man what's up yeah i'm back this is what are you, you guys, dithering this around is that, is that, yeah dithering dilly dallying yeah that, that was me that was me um beat the newest the next level on candy crush oh yeah oh yeah uh no richard is uh richard's a hard hitter and uh chris is great they're doing big things and our boy ben whitaker yeah big ben whitaker looking forward to that one he's the man so yeah a lot of people didn't know if uh, these boxer cards would air here and, you know, cause there's like three main uh, promotions in uh, the UK. There's um, Matchroom, Queensberry, and then Boxer. We had Ben Shalom on, you may recall. And so I like these weekends. I like these weekends where there's, uh, you know, not like a major event, but there's a sprinkling. Um, probably the biggest fight of the weekend would be Tank Davis, Frank Martin. Would you agree with that, GC? A hundred percent. Tank's not happy. You know, I talked on Monday. You know, they're they're doing these pay-per-views, but you need to have some fight nights. You need to, like, I don't, I don't really know. Are they in with Amazon? Are they not in with Amazon? Is it is it is it a long-term investment? Is it a, I don't know. It's a weird one. I don't see a ton of, do you see a ton of promotion for it? Next to none. Right? I don't think I've ever, I, I don't think I've even seen the poster for it. Now that you mentioned, I think I did see it when they announced it. But like Tank Davis is top five most popular boxers. Oh yeah, he's huge. Would you say? Yeah, that's that's why it's the biggest fight of the weekend. Right. Oh man, if this is the poster, this is. <laughs> is it not on par with the CBS? I mean, it's just them and their names. That's it. That's it. Well, let me. That's see. it. Can you show it to us? Yeah, give me a sec. Um. Yeah, I just feel like uh, there should be, there should be more buzz. I don't know. It is Tank Davis. I mean, the last time we did see him fight was against uh, Ryan Garcia. I feel like I need to answer some more questions. Unless there's, is there an update on 303? Is there anything new about UFC 303? No. No, nothing. Oh, yeah. Here's the poster. I mean, it's fine. Honestly, not as bad as I expected. But can I tell you one thing I don't like about it? Yeah, please. It does. It, you know what? I don't like when like the faces look like they are from different photo shoots. You know what I mean? Like they, it doesn't seem like there's the same filter and lighting on all four faces, right? It's almost guaranteed, they're all from different photo shoots. I don't mean I feel different. Like, like boxing doesn't really have the uh, the standard, like what the UFC does. Yeah, the UFC always takes the photos, yeah. with the same lighting and everything before their fights, and they're always up to date. Uh, I feel like boxing doesn't have that. But yeah, first time seeing the poster in what I think is probably the biggest fight of the weekend. Question Both these fights are great. Oh, they're great. Uh, and then you got UFC and then you got uh, PFL on uh, Thursday. So a little something for everyone.